Okay, so we will continue with the lectures on uh, Unit 6 uh, on the topic of electrophilic uh, addition reaction. So as, this, as the name of the reaction uh, contain the word electrophilic, uh, the reaction must involve an electrophile. So electrophile is any species that is electron deficient. It, it wants to accept electron. And we also have, uh, this is an example of an addition reaction in which you are going to add something, uh, in this case, the electrophile, to the substrates or the starting material. So the uh, <coughs> outline for this uh, unit will be uh, at the end of the lesson you should be able to understand the reactions of carbon-carbon double bond. So basically, the addition reaction is an example of reaction for alkene or alkyne. So carb, uh, organic compound that contain carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. And then we will see the uh, mechanism of the uh, addition reaction, of the electrophilic addition reaction. And lastly, uh, also, we will discuss a little bit on the ds alder reaction, which is also another form of uh, addition reaction. It's just that the product form will be uh, cyclic, okay? So, <coughs> some introduction first, okay? Um, so, particularly, this uh, addition reaction will occur at the carbon-carbon double bond. The okay, carbon-carbon double bond is... Uh, you have when you have C double bond C pi bond. Okay, so there are many possible mechanisms whereby a reagent, for example, like XY, which uh, react with an alkene, okay, uh, that has C C double bond. So here we have C C double bond in which you are going to add X and Y, okay, to the uh, alkene structures. So the X and Y will be added to each of the carbon respectively. So the overall reaction is the addition of a reagent across this double bond, okay, this double bond. Uh, the weak pi bond will break, okay, the double bond contain one sigma and one pi bond, so the, bar, the pi bond will break and allow this addition, okay. The strong sigma bond does not take part in the reaction, so the sigma bond over here will stay the same, okay, because uh, at the end of the product, there will still be C single bond C. That single bond correspond to uh, the sigma bond. So the two most important mechanisms are free radicals and also electrophilic addition. Okay, there are two ways in which the uh, addition can happen. But uh, free radical mechanism is very important in industry, okay, but not very common in the lab. So Normally, on lab scale, we will uh, employ the uh, electrophilic uh, addition uh, mechanism. So, example of uh, the free radicals uh, addition reaction is the polymerization, okay? Example of uh, ethylene, okay, in which that it is being converted into polyethylene or Another name also, it is known as PET, K-P-E-T. So if you notice on all uh, what they call plastic product, okay, uh, for example, like your uh, mineral water bottle, so any packaging, if you look at the bottom, there will be this small triangle, uh, sort of like uh, with an arrow. And, and in the middle of that triangle, there will be a number, one, two, three, I think, uh, uh, the number is up to six. So that number actually correspond to the types of uh, polymer that the plastic is made out of, okay? So one of it, you may found that it is, uh, it is written as uh, PET. So PET is uh, polyethylene triethylate. And for polyethylene, uh, there is also two types. One is called HDPE high density polyethylene or the other one is uh, LDPE so low density polyethylene so there might be two uh, choices 
So that purpose of the triangle is so that it's easier to be recycled because if you mix, uh, there are many types of plastic, so you want to have the same type so that it can be easier uh, recycled, okay? Uh, so the N groups, Y and Z, depend on the type of initiation, use and determination steps involved. So here we have an ethene, okay, C, double bond C, two carbon, or also known as ethylene, in which that it will be converted into polyethylene. So under the condition of trace of peroxide at 100 degrees Celsius and also 15,000 PSI. PSI is Pascal uh, per square inch, okay? This is the pressure, temperature and pressure. So what happened is uh, the reaction will proceed via the uh, free radical mechanism in which that uh, the uh, X and Y, oh, sorry, in this case Y and Z will form, uh, will undergo the uh, hetero, uh, heterolytic, uh, sorry, heterolytic fission, okay? Or homolytic fission, sorry, homolytic fission in which that it will become uh, a free radicals. So once these free radicals form, it will then proceed uh, to react, okay, according to the step of the reaction, and finally forming the product. Okay, that uh, free radical mechanism reaction will be further uh, covered in uh, topic seven, okay, but not to worry. But uh, for this particular uh, unit, we will focus on the electrophilic addition. So these are some other examples of polymers. Uh, here we have uh, polystyrene, okay? Polystyrene or also the uh, label known as PS. Okay, this one is widely used as food container, okay? So this is the structures of polystyrene. So you have benzene ring, you have CH2, you have CH and then connected again and again and again, okay? So here you, you look, there is a number of N. N is actually correspond to the repeating unit. So the number of N varies, okay? It can, it can be from 100 up to maybe 1,000. And then another one, okay, this one is uh, PTFE, okay? Uh, also uh, known as uh what uh, you call as uh what do you call that the uh you know when you are in kitchen you when you're cooking that brand of uh tifal uh, sorry i forgot the name okay or those non-stick pan uh, non-stick pan so the coating actually this is the structures of the uh compound okay in which you have all fluorine. So this is what makes all of those non-stick pan. Okay, if you cook anything on them, okay, you don't need oil. Okay, let's say you cook egg on it. So you don't need oil. So it will not stick uh, to the pan. But eventually after uh, prolonged usage, it will start to uh, sort of like being scraped off from the bottom of the pan. So some say that it is not safe because who knows where it might go. Maybe it got mixed up in your food and you consume. But then again, this is what makes all those non-stick pan, okay? The, uh, when you cook on them, uh, the food will not stick to it, okay? Without using oil. Now on to the uh, electrophilic addition reaction. So this is an example of addition reaction in which when you add A plus B, you are going to end up with a new compound, which is called, for example, in this case, AB. So the terms over here use, okay, electrophile, the reagent that are deficient in electron and can accept the electrons. Uh, these are known as an electrophile. Okay, the keyword here is electron deficient. Okay, it may be positive charge. It may also be neutral. Okay, it can be two. It may be neutral or it may be uh, positive charge. Okay, 
So positive electrophile, okay, they it's easier to detect because they carry positive charge uh, at the top here. For example, we have uh, hydrogen ion, okay, hydroxonium ion, and maybe NO2 plus as well. Okay, but for neutral electrophiles, um, we have iron chloride, example, and also aluminum chloride. Okay, this aluminum chloride also is an example of uh, Lewis acid. Okay. So what will happen in the uh, electrophilic addition reaction is that uh, it will uh, proceed. Okay, the XY will uh, undergo electrolytic fission in which that one of the side will receive both of the electrons. So you have X over here with negative charge while Y over here does not receive any electron. So it will be uh, positively charged. Okay, unlike free radical mechanism, each side will receive one electron. Hence, they will become a free radical, but uh, for electrophilic addition reaction, the uh, reagent that you are going to add must be able to uh, ionize completely, okay, to be ionized completely. Or the species must be polarized. So polarized meaning the species or the atoms of Y and X over here must have different polarity. Example over here, we have H and Cl. So we know that Cl has higher electronegativity values. So it will be slightly negative. Okay, label using this symbol. The symbol is actually delta. Delta negative and the hydrogen having lower electronegativity. So it will be slightly positive. Okay, slightly positively polarized. So the general mechanism of electrophilic addition reaction is given by this okay and the reaction mechanism is the same for every type of reaction okay the only difference is that the electrophile and also the structure of the substrate might be different but all that matters is the reaction happen at the c double bond c okay c double bond c so you have your pi bond over here this is your y and x species so the first step is considered to be slow or uh, this is also said to be the rate determining step okay the step that will uh, affect the rate of the whole reaction so first the uh, c double one c so on this area it is considered to be electron rich okay there's a lot of electrons in this it contain pi bond so what it will do that electron will seek out the uh, uh, what you call slightly polarized, slightly positively polarized uh, part of the uh, reagent that you add. So in this case, uh, if you look over here, the arrow is pointing toward X. So that means X will either form the X negative charge ion and the Y will be uh, positively charged ion. So you have cation and anion. So the electron from the C double bond C will go to the cation and it will straight away form a bond so you have c double bond c so now this carbon already has four bonds okay it already take that electron and shared with y so this carbon over here just now it was sharing electron with this carbon but now it already lacks one electron so that's why it formed a carbocation as the intermediate and what happened next is you have this uh, negatively, sorry, this negatively charged ion, okay, the other part of the reagent that you add, okay, that negatively charged ion will then go to the positively charged carbon, the carbocation ion, hence forming the product, okay, that uh, is the final product. So example of... Uh, uh reaction the first one is basically simple uh it's also known as reduction or also hydrogenation so basically in this uh, reaction you are going to treat uh, alkene with hydrogen gas 
So that means you are going to add hydrogen to both sides. So it's easy because the product that you get will be the same because if you add hydrogen on this carbon or on this carbon, it doesn't matter because both will receive the same hydrogen. So the process of adding hydrogen to the C C double bond is in an alkene is known as reduction or hydrogenation. So one atom of hydrogen adds to each carbon of the double bond. So alkene react with hydrogen in the presence of suitable uh, catalyst. So this reaction needs catalyst. So the catalyst can be either nickel, palladium or platinum. Okay, these three. Uh, there must be at least one of them. It can be nickel, palladium or platinum. Then only the product will be formed. So in this case, a saturated alkene. Okay, saturated alkene. And the reaction may be written like this, in which that you have alkene plus H2, then arrow with the catalyst on top, or uh, it may be written this way as well, in which that you have the uh, structures of the alkene with arrow and then you have the catalyst and then slash H2, okay, to form the corresponding unsaturated uh, alkene. So unsaturated vegetable oils, which usually contain numerous double bonds, are partially hydrogenated on a vast scale to produce the mixture of polyunsaturated or saturated fats uh, used in uh, margarine, okay, use in margarine. So this is one example of the use of this reaction. Okay, the reaction, uh, sorry, the addition can happen in two ways. Okay, one we call as syn addition and the other one is called as anti-addition. So syn addition is when both uh, these X and Y species of atoms of group of atoms are being added on to the same side. So this uh, needs you to visualize it because uh, this one falls under the uh, stereochemistry as well. So you need to use that stereochemistry knowledge uh, into uh, finding out the products. So the scene addition, so both of these X and Y are added to the same side. Okay, you will end up with something like this or in this case, the hydrogen is added here using this uh, dotted uh, triangle. Dotted triangle meaning it is pointing to the back. This one, uh, bowl triangle over here is pointing towards you, coming towards, up. Uh, I mean, it is pointing towards you, okay, coming out from the plane. And then we have this anti-addition. So anti-addition is uh, when you add both X and Y species on opposite direction. So you have uh, one, to the bottom pointing downwards and maybe one's pointing upwards. If uh, in this case, if you add the hydrogen, one will be dotted triangle over here, the other one will be uh, bowl uh, triangle. Okay, that will be considered to be anti. But if both are on the same side, then it will be syn addition. Then uh, you may also add hydrogen halide. So what is hydrogen halide? the general formula will be HX. So X can be chlorine, it can be bromine, it can be iodine, or it can be fluorine. And the addition of hydrogen halide okay, is basically uh, one side will receive hydrogen, okay, one carbon will receive hydrogen, while the other carbon will receive the uh, halide, okay, uh, either chlorine or chlorine or bromine. And uh, this reaction, Okay, particularly only for when you add hydrogen halide, we'll follow Markovnikov's rule. So what does Markovnikov rule say? When unsymmetrical alkene, so what is the difference between symmetrical and asymmetrical? So here we have unsymmetrical. You have CH3, CH, double bond, CH2. If you have symmetrical, you have CH3, CH, uh, CH2, uh, CH, CH, and then another CH3. Symmetrical meaning the position of this carbon-carbon uh, double bond is directly in the middle, okay, directly in the middle. If you cannot form like sort of a line of symmetry, a plane of symmetry for that structure, 
then uh, it is said to be unsymmetrical. So when unsymmetrical alkene is treated with reagent, the positive end of the reagent gets bonded okay, to the carbon of double bond having larger number of hydrogen atom. So what does it mean is here we have the uh, reagent. So you have to determine first the positive end of this reagent. So we know that here we have H and Cl. If uh, it is being ionized, it will form Cl minus and H plus. Also, based on polarity, we know that uh, H will be slightly positive. Chlorine will be slightly negative okay, due to the difference in their electronegativity value. So you already uh, take note of which side will be slightly positive. So H will be slightly positive. So that positive end of the reagent will get bonded to the carbon of double bond having larger number of hydrogen atoms. So this hydrogen will get attached to the carbon that has uh, that is having a larger number of hydrogen. So which carbon over here is having larger number of hydrogen? You have this carbon having one CH, this carbon having two CH, eh, sorry, two hydrogen. This carbon having one hydrogen this carbon having two hydrogen. So this new hydrogen from the reagent will go to this carbon because it contains one more hydrogen compared to this carbon. Okay, while the Cl okay, will go to this carbon. Okay, so the Cl will go to this carbon. So the product that you are going to end up with is two chloropropane. Okay, chlorine will go to the middle, the hydrogen will go to the terminal carbon. Okay, but not one chloropropane. This is the result as it follows markov nikos rule. Okay, it follows markov nikos rule. And why does it follow uh, that kind of uh, rules can be explained through the uh, mechanism itself. So what happened in between the reaction, if you see on the general mechanism, it will give you an intermediate known as a carbocation. So what happened here is if you add the uh, hydrogen, okay, hydrogen to the uh, carbon, okay, this one uh, is added to uh, the carbon at the end, okay, this carbon, okay, while this one, the hydrogen is added to the middle carbon. So the carbocation ion form, okay, if when you add the hydrogen at the end, is a secondary carbocation ion. While if you add the hydrogen to the carbon uh, in the middle, okay, the carbocation ion will be this one. And this one is a primary carbocation ion. And according to the uh, carbocation ion stability, tertiary will be more stable compared to secondary and primary. Hence, okay, hence this product will be preferred instead of this one due to the reason of it having more stable uh, intermediate okay in terms of a secondary carbocation ion versus this one a primary carbocation ion and then we have this uh, so-called uh, peroxide effect okay what does this peroxide do is in the reaction is that it will give you the product of uh, different than uh, Markovnikov. Okay, in Markovnikov, the hydrogen will go to the carbon that is having more uh, hydrogen. Okay, but if you add peroxide to the compound, it will not follow that rules. So here it said that Markovnikov rule is quite general but not universal. So addition of HBr okay, to unsymmetrical alkenes in the presence of organic peroxide, okay, the general formula is ROOR, okay, ROOR, an example of peroxide, let's say you have HOOR, that is hydrogen peroxide, okay, takes a course opposite to that suggested by markov nikos rule. So when unsymmetrical alkene is treated with reagent okay, in the presence of peroxide, then the positive end of the reagents bonded to the carbon of double bond having least number of hydrogen atom. So this 
can be known as peroxide effect or also known as anti or uh, anti Markovnikov's rule. So example over here we have uh, propene or propylene. Okay, we treat it with HBr. Okay, here we have uh the reaction without the presence of peroxide and this one with peroxide so without peroxide the hydrogen over here will be added to this carbon and bromine to this carbon to the this blue carbon so you are going to end up with uh two bromo uh, propane or isopropyl bromide okay so true two bromo propane will be the uh product by when the reaction also involves a peroxide okay this hydrogen will be added to the blue carbon and the bromine will be added uh, to the terminal carbon okay carbon that is having the higher number of hydrogen so the product that you are going to add is bromine will be attached to the first carbon so it will just be known as uh bromopropane okay one bromopropane so this is what is known as anti Markovnikov's rule. Okay, anti Markovnikov's rule. So the mechanism uh, that results in that kind of product. So how does the peroxide uh, actually uh, makes the product different? So basically, the peroxide okay, will be converted into a free radical. So you have two RO that oxygen over here is a free radical so we have o with one tiny dot so that tells you that this ro is the free radical and then that ro free radical will be then react with the reagent that you add in this case hbr hence the br will be turned into a free radical itself okay the BR will be turned into free radical itself. Once it becomes the free radical, uh, the uh, C double bond C from the alkene will start doing its job. So it will start sharing the electron. Okay, one of the carbon will share the electron with bromine, which is the N. Okay, the end of the uh, uh, carbon over here, these compounds, the CH2, forming these structures in which that you have uh, C over here, the C free radical being a uh, secondary carbon free radical. Okay, a secondary carbon free radical. So according to the stability uh, scale, a tertiary carbon free radical has higher stability compared to secondary and then primary. So that's why when you add the uh, peroxide it will change the product okay it will follow the anti markovnikov's way and then when you add a uh, halogen okay for the addition reaction you may also add halogen to the reaction so the halogen is basically the same if br2 i2 f2 or cl2 then both sides uh, will receive uh the same halogen okay like in this example you have c double bond c plus br2 it will give you uh both of the carbon uh bonded with bromine so addition of halogen in carbon tetrachloride which is ccl4 or chloroform chcl3 or dichloromethane ch2cl2 okay these are all considered to be solvent Okay, CCl4, CHCl3 or CH2Cl2. So bromine and chlorine both react readily with these alkenes to give 1,2-dihaloalkene. So 1,2-dihaloalkene is when the bromine or chlorine is added to carbon number 1, carbon number 2 of that C double bond C. So when the bromine solution reacted with an unknown sample, which is unsaturated, so unsaturated, it means that it contains double triple bond. The reddish brown color of the bromine, okay, this reddish brown color of the bromine will disappear. So if it becomes colorless, that means the compound that you are testing contains a double or maybe a triple bond. 
but if it remains the same then we know that the compound that you are testing is saturated uh, that means it does not contain any uh, double bond at all so this color change confirms that the sample is probably an unsaturated compound which consists the double bond of an alkene and then we also have uh, the addition of halogen in water so just now the solvent use is uh, uh, carbon tetrachloride chloroform or dichloromethane but when you add halogen to the substrates or alkene in water a uh, different product will be obtained um, the OH from the water adds to the more substituted carbon and halonium ion uh, is the intermediate so a cyclic bromonium ion will be formed water will attack the more substituted carbon and remove the proton so product form that you are going to end up with is a halohydrine so what is halohydrine you have halogen and also oh uh, being uh, added to the c double bond c so one side will be uh, the halogen itself and the other carbon will receive the oh okay so this is what you call as a halohydrine. So the halo correspond to the halogen. If bromine will become bromo, chlorine will be chloro, fluorine will be uh, fluoro, iodine will be iodo. Okay. <coughs> so these two are the example. Okay. So the halohydrine will be the uh, major product, while the uh, one two uh, dihaloalkene will be the minor product okay here is the uh, uh, what you call the uh, mechanism okay but this one is so small uh, later i will try to correct it okay and show a bigger picture and then we have uh, the hydroxylation of alkenes or also known as oxidation of alkenes okay you are going to oxidize alkene so alkene uh, can be oxidized into uh, an alcohol, okay, an alcohol or a diol actually with the use of uh, oxidizing agent. Okay, that oxidizing agent are uh, commonly potassium permanganate. Okay, you have K which is potassium MnO4 is, uh, permanganate. So potassium permanganate. Example over here, we have two butene. Okay, <coughs> two butene and the oxidation are being done uh, in uh, the presence of H2O and the reaction temperature is cold. So when we say cold here, that means you have to cool it down below room temperature. Okay, room temperature. And the product form will be vicinal diol in which that you are going to add OH to both of the carbons. Okay, you have to add OH to both of the carbon. Uh, this one is a uh, cyclic alkene. Okay, still the product is the same. Both of the C double bond C will receive one OH each. So you are going to receive one two cyclopentane diol. And here the OH are on the same side. So this is an example of syn addition. Okay, so in terms of stereochemistry, so it will be written as cis 1 2 cyclopentane diol. So, further uh, oxidation, so once you have this vicinal diol, you can further convert the uh, alcohol into carboxylic acid. So, if you keep on the reaction, okay, further uh, heating it and uh, providing it with the oxidizing agent, the alcohol or the diol just now will be straight away converted into a carboxylic acid. Okay, in this case, dicarboxylic acid. And then, uh, example, another example of uh, addition reaction is ozonolysis. So you want to add uh, ozone, okay, to the uh, C double bond C. So when an alkene is treated with ozone at low temperatures, the double bond will break and the carbons that were doubly bonded to each other are now 
doubly bonded to the oxygen. So basically, uh, uh, the C double bond C will be broken all together. Okay, it will be broken at this side and it will form a new bond with oxygen each. Okay, with oxygen each. So ozone, oh sorry, this one aldehydes and ketone uh, and or carboxylic acid will be formed. So your product will be different. You are not going to end up with uh, alkane or haloalkane or halohydrin, okay, uh, or even alcohol. So the product will be either aldehyde, ketones or carboxylic acid. So it depends on the reaction condition. So ozone and the alkene uh, undergo a concerted uh, cycloaddition reaction. Okay, the oxygen atoms adds to the two sp2 carbons in single step. So in reducing condition, okay, reducing condition, this is what you call as the intermediate. Okay, this is the intermediate in which that the carbon, oxygen, remember the ozone having three oxygen. So you have one, two, three, three oxygen. Okay, so this is the intermediate. So if the reaction is done in reducing condition, the product form will be ketone and aldehyde. But if the re reaction is done in oxidizing condition, you are going to end up with uh, ketone and uh, carboxylic acid. So basically both product uh, having ketone, but the only difference is either aldehyde or carboxylic acid. Okay, the reducing condition involves uh, the presence of zinc, okay, or in uh, oxidizing condition, uh, there must be a presence of uh, hydrogen peroxide, okay, hydrogen peroxide. Then uh, we also have reactions of alkenes with carbenes. So if you uh, go back to chapter four, go back to what is carbene. Carbene is carbon that is having two bonds and also uh, two free electron over here. It is not negatively charged. It is still uh, neutral. So when you add carbene to alkene, okay, it is uh, one of the most uh, great synthetic uh, method to obtain a three-membered rings. Okay, the product form will be a three-membered ring. Example, if you use methylene and you add a carbene, Okay, to the double bond, it will form cyclopropane. So if you notice that we focus just on the C double bond C, this side, this side, and this side, and this side can be any substituents. Okay, depends on the structures. It can be hydrogen, the simplest form. It can be CH3, or it can be a very complex long alkyl chain. Okay, but that uh, doesn't matter what the reaction or the addition focus on is the C double bond C. So it will be added and forming the so-called uh, three-membered rings, okay? So a variety of cyclopropane derivative has been uh, prepared by the reaction between dichlorocarbin and alkenes. The, uh, uh, products obtained by these reactions are Stereo specific, okay, in which that, uh, for example, here if you add CCl2, okay, the CX2, the X being the halogen, is stereo specific. If the R groups of the alkenes are trans in the product, so they will be, uh, sorry, trans in the uh, reactant, then they will be trans in the product, okay, so it will follow uh, the same stereochemistry as the, as the reagent. <clears throat> so that uh, is all on the uh, addition of alkene. Okay, there's also a uh, compound which may contain more than one double bond. So that is called uh, diene. Okay, if you have more than one double bond, if there is two, they will be called as diene three, triene, and so on. So dienes are molecules containing two carbon-carbon double bonds. So if the alkene bonds are separated by only one single bond, it is common for them to interact. 
So double bonds that alternate with single bonds are said to be uh, conjugated. So what does it mean by conjugated? If you have double bond, single bond and double bond. So that is considered to be conjugated or it can be single bond, double bond, single bond. And another type is when the alkene bonds are separated by more than one single bond. So they cannot interact. Example here we have one for pentadiene. So this is considered to be uh, non-conjugated. Okay, non-conjugated or uh, isolated uh, double bonds in which you have double, double bond, single bond, single bond, double bond. So the position of the double bond is being separated by more than one single bond. Okay, so there are other types of conjugated systems beside diines, and these are very important as coloring pigments. Example over here, we have carotene. So carotene can be found uh, in uh, uh, naturally available, like for example, in carrot. So if you notice that in carrot, uh, it is said to be rich in uh, beta carotene. So this is the structures of carotene, okay, in which it contains a lot of uh, conjugated double bond, okay, in the uh, alkyl chain. Okay, you have quite a few over here. All of the alkyl chain is conjugated double bonds. Also, uh, I forgot to list it here. There's also one more type of double bonds, uh, sorry, one more type of diines, also known as cumulated diines. So that diines is having both double bonds side by side. So you have double bond, double bond, then probably single bond, single bond, single bond. So that is uh, also uh, known as a cumulated uh, diene in which both diene are situated side by side. So in terms of electrophilic addition, two conjugated dienes. So what will happen when you want to try uh, to add something to a compound that has two double bonds. So which double bond it will go? I mean, which double bond will remain and which double bond will be broken, okay, to be added with the reagents. So one of the most striking difference between the chemistry of conjugated dienes and isolated di uh, alkenes is in their electrophilic addition reaction. So here we have conjugated and this one is non-conjugated. So conjugated, you have double bond, single bond, double bond, non-conjugated, double, single, single, double. Okay, the uh, double bond are separated by more than one single bond. So product form for conjugated diene is two. You are going to have two different product. One uh, is uh, the double bond will retain at one side, while uh, the other side will be added with Cl. So you have, you add one chlorine here, one chlorine here, this double bond will remain the same. Or another uh, product is the double bond suddenly being shifted to the middle, okay? And each of the side or end of the carbon will receive one chlorine each. While for non-conjugated, Okay, there will be just one product because the double bond are far apart. So only one side will receive the chlorine. So this carbon receive chlorine, this carbon receive chlorine, or this carbon uh, receive chlorine. So both of these carbon will receive chlorine. Okay, because the product will just be one type. So what happened in conjugated? Okay, why there are two products? So this is the mechanism. Okay, mechanism, if you look at the mechanism, uh, there will be a formation of carbocation involved. Since both sides is chlorine, okay, since both sides is chlorine, you may add the first chlorine, for example, to the first carbon. Because the, the carbocation ion form will be a secondary uh, carbocation ion. If you add the chlorine to this carbon first, then you are going to end up with primary carbocation ion, which is less stable. So always add the chlorine to the terminal carbon, which is the last carbon, carbon that is having higher number of hydrogen, so that 
the carbocation will be secondary. So once it become this uh, secondary carbocation, okay, this uh, electron basically can move. So this is what you call as uh, the shifting of uh, carbocation. So the position of the carbocation uh, change from one carbon to another because over here you have this double bond and you have electrons. So this is what resonance, okay, or a resonance structures in which that uh, the electron from this double bond will try to compensate the positive ion on this carbon over here. But once it gives this electron, so this carbon instead of sharing with this carbon, it want to share with this uh, CH. So when that happen, okay, now this carbon will become positively charged. Okay, so this is a primary, primary carbon. Then the Cl minus, the other Cl minus will go and attack, okay, on this side and form a new bond. So that's why you have two different products. One is where the other chlorine will be bonded to this carbon. The other one will be bonded to this carbon. So you have product A and product B. So at low temperatures, the isomer ratio can be related to the charge distribution in the carbocation hybrid. Okay, so this is what you call as the resonance structures. So the secondary cation contributor A is slightly more stable than the primary cation contributor B. Hence, you have this as the major product, which is 60%, and this one is 40% only because the intermediate carbocation is primary. And on to the uh, last part, okay, for this uh, unit, uh, it is on the diels alder reaction, okay. Uh, the reaction involves the treatment of uh, conjugated diene with dienophile, okay. So <laughs> you have, sorry, conjugated diene, okay, the conjugated diene when you have double single double bond okay with dienophile so what is dienophile dienophile can be another alkene or it can be alkyne so alkyne c triple bond c so any compound that has a uh, c uh, triple bond c so no catalyst will be required so the reaction just proceed by adding uh, diene, conjugated diene and also one of the dienophile. The product of this other reaction is known as an adduct. Okay, it is also known as a cycloaddition reaction because the product form will be a cyclic. Okay, the product form will be in a cyclic structures. So this reaction makes new carbon-carbon bonds and the net result is the two uh, it's the formation of two new sigma bonds and one new pi bond at the expense of three original pi bonds. Okay, so electron withdrawing groups increases the reactivity of the dienophile and also will increase the reactivity. So what happened over here, let's see this example, a 1,4 addition reaction to 1,3 butadiene. So when you see a compound like this, so what you have to focus is the C double bond C, C single bond C, C double bond C. So on this side only. Let me change to pen. Okay, this side. Okay, this side only. Don't worry about whatever substituent is attached to that carbon because that will follow. That will not change. Okay, that will not change. And on the dieno file, you have to focus on the C double bond C or the C triple bond C, okay, depending whether it is an alkene or alkyne. This part, okay, this part is actually the substituents. Okay, if you look at the product, it is still the same. It does not affect the reaction or it won't be changed. Okay, it just follows. So what happened over here? It is said that the uh, reaction will form two new sigma bonds and one new pi bond.
okay, at the expense of three original pi bonds. So that means three pi bonds will be broken. And that pi bond will be this one, okay, this one, and also this one. These three will be broken. And one new pi bond will be formed. And two new sigma bonds will be formed. So what happened? It starts from the dienophile. So look at the arrow. A the arrow means uh, there is movement of electron. So always starts from electron rich uh, centers. That means the dienophile itself, the alkene. So from this side, which is electron rich, okay, pi bond contain electron, it will go to this carbon. Once it go to this carbon, it means there will be a new bond form and that bond will be single bond and that single bond correspond to this one. Okay, to this one. See the number? One, two, three, four carbon. So carbon number four will form a new bond with this carbon. So that will be single bond. Then second step. Now this carbon already has one extra bond. So uh, this carbon over here does not want to share electron with carbon number four. Instead, it will share its electron with carbon number two. So hence, a new double bond will be formed here. So carbon number three and carbon number two have one new double bond. Then at carbon number two, so carbon number two now uh, does not share it, it, its electron with carbon number one. So this carbon number one has extra electrons. So now it will share with this carbon that comes from the alkene or alkyne. Okay, the dienophile over here. So carbon number one will form a sigma bond or single bond with this carbon, hence this one. So you have a new uh, six-membered cyclic structures and the rest of the substituents just follows. Okay, whatever here will be attached to the same carbon and whatever is attached to this carbon 3 and carbon number 2 or carbon number 4 will be the same. But in this case, all is hydrogen. For this reaction, it involves an alkyne. So basically, this carbon will form a single bond with this carbon. This carbon will form a single bond with this carbon. And this one will be double bond this will become single bond and single bond. Hence, you have single, double, uh, sorry, single, double, single, single bond, single bond. And why is this double bond? Because your dienophile is an alkyne. Just now, this example, the dienophile is alkene. So double bond will become single bond, but triple bond will become double bond because only one pi bond uh, will be broken. <clears throat> so consideration of uh, stereochemistry uh, in terms of their other uh, reaction. So if a chiral center is created, if the product form involves a chiral center, where does the chiral center, which is this one, okay, if there is a chiral center involved, so equal amount of R and S uh, will be produced. Okay, here we have H pointing to the back, this one H pointing uh, to the front, okay, towards you. So you are going to end up with uh, two kinds of product, two enantiomers. And the reaction is also stereospecific with regards that uh, the reagents that you use, the reagent in this case is the dienophile. If a cis dienophile is used, okay, the product that you get also will be cis. Well, if you use trans dienophile, product obtained also will be trans. Okay, you don't remember about the stereochemical part, please go back to your lecture notes on stereochemistry, chapter 3. Okay, so it is stereospecific, but the stereochemistry will remain the same. Cis uh, reagent will give you cis product trans reagent will give you trans product. So these two are uh, an example of uh, the compound having uh, stereochemistry 
So if you look over here, this is considered to be cis. Okay, both hydrogen are on the same side. So cis, these two are on the same side, CH3 and C double bond OOH. Product form will be these two are on the same side. Okay, meaning that it will be pointing towards the same side, pointing towards you or maybe pointing away from you. Okay, so that will be considered to be cis. While this one trans the enophile, one hydrogen on this side, one hydrogen on the right side. So product form will be one pointing uh, to the back, one pointing to the front. Okay, you have here CH3 with dotted triangle. And the COOH will be on the bowl triangle. Okay, meaning that it is pointing towards different direction. So that uh, will be all on the uh, topic of uh, electrophilic uh, addition reactions. So do you have uh, any question on the lecture?